Hi guys, uh, so uh, good afternoon, and I think you, this is the only session that you see this talk server in, in, the, in the name, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, so my name is Sandro Pereira, I'm the head of integration at Tebscope. I'm an MVP since 2011, I've been in the BizTalk world, Azure world, so I'm an enterprise integration, so I work in any any kind of scenarios about Microsoft integration, both on-premise or in the cloud. So you have my contacts there, feel free to reach me out. Um, I'm also doing a lot of training at the moment, uh, BSOC training, Logic App training, so if you are interested, just uh, speak with me also. And uh, if you want to know more, you, see, uh, you saw a session about Data Mapper yesterday from uh, Wagner. Uh, I'm going to do a walk in the park with the new data mapper uh, in the Logic App Aviators Day. So feel free to register. It's a free online uh, event. A um, lot of sessions there, so I think you will enjoy it. And um, the driver behind this session was actually about this white paper that I did alongside with Michael Stephson and Stephen Thomas and Microsoft. That was this Azure integration service uh, from BSOC server migration guide, guidance. So it's on Microsoft. You have the link there. So these slides will also be available there. Um, you have a lot of guidance to move from BSOC server to Azure. Uh, it was kind of uh, more than 20 pages of work there. A lot of experience there also. So uh, go ahead and, and have a look. And um, just, this is not a session for uh, why you need to migrate or leave BizTalk or stay in BizTalk, okay? This is not this type of session. Your organization already decided that they are moving on and uh, they need to migrate to Azure. So this is about this session. And do not came with the same story again that, uh, so BizTalk is not that yet. Uh, we still have a lot of space to run. Uh, we still have a long roadmap, kind of uh, 2030 support. So it's still a very critical in some companies. So do not start this buzz again that this talk is dead just because everyone is talking about uh, Azure. So. While migrating BizTalk server to Azure, you have to understand both BizTalk and Azure, okay? So if you start with BizTalk, the keyword is consistent, okay? If you, we have a, a release cadence normally two, three years, the engine, the, 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 the core engine of BizTalk 2020 is still the same of 26, 24, okay? Uh, so, you can actually take a, a, a application from 24, 26, and migrate to 2020 easily, okay, if you use the core features of BizTalk. Of course, there is a lot of things you now going on and so on and so forth. It's a single application, a single kind of a tool, okay, it's a platform. You have everything there. You have your own Visual Studio 2019, SQL Server. BSOC server, and so on and so forth, no? Uh, you design your application based on the technical requirements. You don't think about costs, you don't think about kind of nothing else, platform, nothing. You design your application based on requirements, okay? And, um, well, you build your application, 90% of the work is done. The rest is deployment, configurations, and sometimes fine tunings. That's it, okay? And the focus about this talk is in the message, okay? You don't care about if you are going to connect with, with FTP, file, web service, you have your message, you design your solution by the message, and then connect to the systems, more or less, okay? And everything, I mean, everything inside this talk is pops up, okay? You have receive ports, send ports, orchestrations, Nevertheless, it's going to create a filter inside the message box that is going to pick up a message. Everything is per se. Now, Azure is completely different. The only uh, thing that is consistent is inconsistent because everything can change from one side to the other side, from one day to the other, okay? 
We have a designer. Now it's a new designer. <laughs> we have uh, logic apps. And then we have logic app standard and consumption. Functions, B1, B2, B3, everything changed in a cons rapidly. And we have to keep that. It's not wrong that. It's good also. But we have to keep the pace. You no longer stay three years, five years inside the same solution because it's still working on the machine. No? Now you have to go fast. You have to change fast. You have to adapt. Okay? Uh, you design your solution not only based on requirements anymore. Because if you design to the, uh, design to the requirements, then you go premium, 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 and then the client say, no, I don't have budget. Okay? I'm not going to spend 100K per year just to process 20 messages per day. That's not going to happen anymore. Okay? So you need to start designing by the requirements, looking to the price, looking to the decisions and rules of the client. No? Low code, uh, code first, no code first. It depends on your organization. Some organizations say, I want to go code first approach. So that means you have going to functions, APIs, and so on and so forth. If there are organizations that say, I am an organization that is go for no code first and then code first, then you have, you have to look for Power Automate, Logic Apps, and all the stuff like that. No? It depends on the guidance of the company, the requirements of the, the solution, and the price. Price matters, okay? Especially if you are not a big company, Coca-Cola or something like that, and you don't care about money, uh, then, it, then it's okay. Um, also, if you look, and specific in this case, Logic Apps, the focus is not on the message itself. The focus is on the API, on the connector, okay? If I want to connect to the SQL, I am kind of binding to the SQL server, and I have to respect that SQL server. It's not a message that can go, and then I need to bind to other scenarios. We talk, we produce the, the solution, and then we bind the solution to the receipt ports and the systems, not anymore. So the logic app is kind of a mix together all of this stuff. And there is no PubSub, okay? Everything is PubSub in BizTalk. There is no PubSub in, in, in Azure integration service by default. You have to use Service Buzz or the stuff like that. Service Buzz is kind of the first go to go for the PubSub mechanism persistent all of this stuff, okay? So it's, it's a complete different architecture and technology, okay? You have already seen that. Uh, these are the major um, service on the Azure Integration Service brand. But there are a lot of things that you also have to use to, to migrate our BSOC integration solutions to Azure. No? Uh, so saying that, and on this journey, what you shouldn't do or think that is OK. Okay, so think that you can migrate as is BizTalk to Azure Integration uh, Service is not going to happen. Okay, so if you want that, just ship a BizTalk machine to Azure and there you go, as is. Okay, because it's a complete different giant. You have to, and I don't say migrate because man, yeah, migrate is taking one solution to fine tunings and go ahead. And I, I say you need to redesign your solutions. Okay, and I um, don't think it's going to be an easy ride and a short ride, okay? So I can my easily migrate a BizTalk solution to a new version in a short period of time. But to put that in production is different because I have business to test and approve. It's going to be a nightmare. So in some cases, when the organization is focused on that, it's going to be an easy ride. I had a scenario recently that I did a migration in one month. It took one year to discontinue the other server. So because there was no alignment with the teams and, and time frame, so it, it was a nightmare. So imagine now that we need to redesign our solutions. We need, we need to do heavily test to our solutions. That's not going to be an easy ride, OK? Also depends on 
the, the number of locations you have, the footprint you have in BizTalk, and the complexity of your system. Because some, some integration process, they are easy to kind of lift and shift. Others are more complex on that. Uh, you saw in the, in the session, uh, two sessions ago, Bill speaking about ADI stuff and so on. That's all this kind of migration that happens. Kind of, we have a good way to do that, but still, there are some complexity. Okay. Uh, and again, I see a lot of people saying we are going to Azure uh, to innovate. Okay. Lift and shift, do as is. Your BizTalk solution to Azure is not innovate. I'm sorry to tell you, it's not innovation that. That's just using a different technology to do the same stuff. Take this opportunity to actually speak with the business and see, can we do this in a different way? We are using flat file to flat file. Can you use a different format? Can instead of using a file or a folder, can we use a queue or a service bus? Or can we actually implement REST service or something like that, no? Try to innovate. Because you are going to redesign the solutions. You are going to change all of these topics. What better way to do that and, and do some innovation, in, in fact, some innovation to the process? So take this opportunity to do that also. Um, and don't think that you are going away with BizTalk. You don't need to deal about migrations anymore. You are not going to migrate or support infrastructure. But you are going to face migrations, nevertheless. I told the slide before, the only thing that is consistent in Azure is inconsistent. Because everything is going to be fast. Azure functions, B1, B2, B3, migrations happen. Okay? Sometimes you need to do fine tuning on, on the code and migrate all of this stuff. Eyes environment is going to be deprecated, so I need migrating all my eyes environment with logic apps to standard of consumption. So it will happen nevertheless, okay? Different type of migration, but happens. So be aware of that. All of these is to uh, set up correctly your expectations, okay? Because if you have the right expectations on this migration path to Azure, you are not going to be disappointed because you will face problems. That will happen. There's going to be challenge in migrating the BizTalk solution to Azure. But if you have the correct expectations, it's going to be a more easy ride, okay? And don't jump directly to migration process, saying that, okay, organization decide to migrate. I'm going to start, take application and start migration, okay? Don't start doing that without doing the foundations, okay? This is Azure. So when you, we are going to a new project inside BizTalk, the first question that we ask is, how many environments do you have? Dev, test, production, good. So which type of environments? Privilege, all of this, no? The same happens inside the Azure. So it's not going because I'm going to Azure. I'm no, I'm, I have to have a dev environment. I have to have a test environment. I have to have a production environment also because I am going to connect with different systems. How we are going to handle that? One single subscription? Multiple subscriptions? Are you going to use dev test subscriptions? Because it's going to be a slit different price. It's a non-production subscription, so it's going to be cheap are going to handle uh, environments by resource groups. So same subscription, different resource groups. What are uh, my, uh, well, and actually I'm going to speak about this later, but and do not plan also in advance, kind of, I want to migrate as a big band. Kind of, I'm going to migrate everything and I'm start working on Azure. That will not, never work, okay? That's going to be a five years pro process, and we are going to release everything is deprecated in Azure. So keep doing small stuff. Change, release, change, release, change, release, and deprecate everything. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. So, and the basics is about what technology are you going to use? So if you are, well, 
depending on, sometimes you work as an organization, sometimes you work for a customer with different partners inside. If you allow partners to decide all your integration, what happens is that one partner decides to use functions and service bus, another one decides to go premium for everything, and you have the same stuff doing in two different architectures, and it's going to be a nightmare for you to decide and, or, and maintain all of this. So you need to start organization, organizing your technology stack, saying, okay, my integration stack is about API management, functions, and logic app. If there is some, any other need for other resources, you have to give me and explain me why and start doing that but all of them have to be consistent. Then it says, what about subscription policies? One subscription, multiple subscriptions, uh, resource group policies, how you are going to work with resource groups, security policies, because trust me, no one is going to allow you to deploy stuff to production and go there and create all resource if you are a partner. If you are inside the company, maybe, but not a partner, okay? I have to script everything, do CI, CD for everything, and that's another story. Uh, tag policy, that's important from day one, okay? Because you have to good, put a good tag policies. Uh, naming conventions, I'm a freak of naming convention, okay? If someone, and I'm doing that, I'm saying that honestly, if one of my team members show me a uh, logic app, and I say var one, Stop it, rename it, and then talk with me again, okay? I'm not going further with the conversation. I'm, I'm no, I will not allow that. And it's not naming conventions just inside the logic app. It's about resource group naming conventions, function naming conventions, logic app naming conventions. Everything has to be a good naming convention. Otherwise, it's going to be a nightmare to maintain all of these inside Azure. Okay, I know that he's not the developer that maintained that, but be careful of the other one. Run away, because if he catch you on the, on the wall, he's going to kill you to maintain all of this stuff. End-to-end -end tracking capability. And I don't mean kind of BAM capabilities, I say end-to-end -end tracking capabilities. A message arrives to API management, he goes to a logic app, he goes to other function, he goes to a service verse, he enters another API management. I need to track all of this stuff. Okay? Um, monitoring, failing, what happens in the failing, all of this stuff. Um, error handling and retry capabilities. We have some of this stuff present inside a logic app, no? Uh, persistent and retry, re entry in some cases, depending on your solutions. And uh, um, deployment policies, again, we have different deployment. Uh, scenarios for API management, as the function is different. Logic app consumption is different, logic app standard is different, all of the service have a different deployment solution, no? You have to be consistent of that. Uh, and then, again, all of these deployment strategies. So, before you start to migrate all of this stuff, Talk. If you plan this in advance, okay, have a good documentation about uh, policies, naming conventions, start organizing your end-to-end -end tracking capabilities and then migrate the solutions, then you are in a good position. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit nightmare. And this is a learning process, of course. Okay? You are going to create a little bit, experiment, fine-tuning, and in the next integration, it's going to be better and better and better, okay? But at least if you know this in advance, you can start preparing all of this, uh, this stuff and be in a, in a better way, okay? So what do we need to do and start doing from day one on this journey? The first thing that you need to do is assess your BizTalk environment, okay? Do not go and jump that you need to do an assessment of what exists and do the documentation. So this is kind of an example of that. And uh, let me show you here some examples. 
so we all know this one, the BizTalk document. This is a good start for that. Um, this is a good technical documentation about the process, all the rules that are inside. And then we can create some kind of uh, Word document explaining in a, a less detail and highlight all the progress about communication and so on. Sorry, this is in Portuguese, but you get the point now. But we can also do this kind of uh, uh, BZU diagrams where we have all the, the connectivity between systems and connections so we know what systems to connect and then go process to process and detail a little bit that in kind of a workflow situation. So we need our business logic in an abstract way so we know how to implement or it's going to be easier to implement and, and understand on the logic app uh, or in an agile way, okay? So back to the slides. So after you design, after all the documentation, we still need to kind of design our integration solution inside Azure integration. And when I mean design, we have, we have to start organizing what is our integration stack, you know? API management, service bus, function, all of this stuff. And then we need to understand kind of what are the key difference between Azure and BizTalk, you know? In BizTalk, we have message routing, and the message routing normally is the message box, huh? and property promotions and filters. In Logic App, we have service bus queue topics, event grid, API management. We can kind of create the same concept for routing with policies, SQL, Azure Cache. We can have different ways. But normally, I'm going for the Azure uh, service bus. No? Then we have kind of schemas. Um, yeah, schemas, it's the default artifact of this talk. No? JSON, XML, flat files, by default, in Logic App uh, consumption, we have the integration accounts. So it's quite a bit expensive, no? but it's only the only options. Uh, we can work around that by creating a storage account with an Azure function or API app and call that schemas and map and do that in by code inside Logic App consumption. Or we have Logic App standard that supports schemas and maps in directly on the engine. Mapping, yes, we have BSOC Mapper, uh, XSLT, API management there, support also in BSOC. If you're going for the Azure, we have again Azure integration account for consumption. Uh, again, we can work around with storage account. We have the standard uh, support directly and we have the new data mapper, okay? You, we also have kind of a mapping uh, and creating schemas in the, the developer uh, experience inside consumption, but that is Visual Studio 2015 plugin, so it's kind of a little bit deprecated. Um, well, if you say pipelines, yeah, we have receive pipelines and pipelines in BizTalk, we don't have the equivalent in, inside Azure uh, integration service, but Logic App can act as a pipeline. API management can act as a pipeline. And as a function, sometimes can act as a pipeline. So we can easily migrate that to, to these components. An adapter that is out of the, bo is on, out of the box with BizTalk, we have kind of 25 adapters, you can create custom adapters. Well, we have connectors, 800 plus connectors. Uh, we can create custom connectors nowadays. Sometimes a logic app can act as a connector also, maybe, and functions also can act as a connector, no? Orchestration, that's easy, no? We have logic app, consumption, standard, but we also have other functions, uh, and we also have kind of API sometimes, because sometimes we do a lot of integration with C-sharp inside BizTalk. So, yeah. Business rules, 
there is nothing out there by default, but it's on the roadmap. Uh, but actually, yeah, we also can create business rules inside Azure nowadays. If you use kind of logic app key vaults or app configurations, we kind of work around some of the business rules that we create in BizTalk. Or we can create custom stuff with C Sharp, uh, Azure Functions, SQL. Yeah, sometimes we can create that also, depending how crazy you are using business rules inside BizTalk. Okay? Normally, by my business rules is a bit more a little bit about content-based routing and so on and so forth, so I'm happy with that. There is nothing in BAM. It's on the roadmap. Uh, uh, Microsoft uh, show a little bit that on business process, process tracking. Uh, but yeah, I still can do that end-to-end -end tracking uh, with custom integration features. Azure monitoring, log analytics, you can put SQL, Power BI on top of it. You can still do all of this stuff. And, well, tracking, tracking, because one thing is BAM, another is tracking inside BizTalk now. Um, yeah, you, you can use, um, no, that is wrong about the uh, BizTalk mapper, sorry about the, the typo, but tracking you can enable and disable anytime in BizTalk you will not have kind of this possibility by default inside uh, Azure integration, but you still can use log analytics and, uh, and Azure monitor to do some kind of tracking. Uh, that's why this, that component's wrong. ADI stuff, we have the integration account, it support XSLT, uh, sorry, uh, RosettaNet, uh, ADI stuff, all of this stuff, no? Uh, and all of these accelerators nowadays are there, so all good. And um, when about BizTalk binding files, because we have this separate stuff between what is the code and what is the binding files to associate with the sports, well, there is nothing there except bicep scripts. So if you want to kind of change this binding, well, sometimes you can do that uh, configuration of the connectors based on the, on the DevOps pipelines and bicep scripts. That's close it. Uh, we ca I can see about this stuff, okay? Um, enterprise single sign-on, Key Vault is one of the best choice. Then we have SQL, of course, we can also use SQL to store these, or app configurations, depending how you want to go crazy about security, or simplify that. There is no cross-reference, and this is kind of an old-school uh, feature of BizTalk. It has tables for cross-referencing. Cross Luckily, only you use one time in a project that exists. Uh, it's, well, you can create that in SQL, nevertheless, but it's not, luckily, it's not that heavily used inside BizTalk. Um, and configurations, uh, of course, uh, we can use Key Vault, SQL, and App Configuration to do that, okay? So, kind of, we work, work around a little bit with the, scheme, uh, with the uh, service that we have, but we can do the, all of this stuff. So, uh, uh, oh. Why is this moving from another slide? Oh, it's good. Sorry. My bad. So once you design your, uh, make this design, we can start developing your solutions. That's the easy part. Uh, and then, of course, go into test the solutions and at the end, do the deployment to the solutions to the, all the environments, okay? so. That's kind of the process that you should take, okay? Uh, now I'm going to kind of show a small uh, examples. So I didn't want to do a big project and migrate because it's going to be a lot of confusion. So I, talked, uh, I, I, I take some sa uh, small samples of BizTalk and try to reproduce inside Azure integration. So one of these is well, I think most of us has a file transfer in our BizTalk environment. This is a little bit a simple file transfer, but with some specific scenarios. 
So I have a file that you see that DBS, SP, and a number. DBS is my company, DevScope, kind of is a prefix. SP is the client, and the number is the ID of the, of the file. That's a flat file. The flat file has an header on top of it, uh, inside the file. I'm going to show that in a few uh, minutes. We need to remove that header, and you need to route based on what is the partner to different FTP servers. So what I have in, in BizTalk, in my client, is I have a pipeline that go into kind of do the flat file to an XML because I need to remove the other. There is business rules being called uh, inside the pipeline to split the name, promote the, the partner, and promote the file name, and then send to the message box. That's going to be subscribed by different send ports uh, and sent to different FTP adapters, okay? So, we don't have business rules in, uh, in, uh, in Logic App. Before I show the demo, and just not be changing slides and demos, slides and demo, this was the solution I prepared, okay? Uh, I have the same file receive. I have a Logic App that acts as my receive port with the pipeline. Okay, all the receive port is my logic app. So I, I have inside that the flat file disassemble. It's going to remove that header from the flat, using the flat file schema. It's going to grab the file name, split that file name, decide what is the partner, and it will dynamically route to a child logic app that is going to act as my send ports. And in this case, again, I try to innovate a little. So instead of being flat file to flat file, I actually put one partner kind of in a rest situation and another one in a flat file without the other, okay? So I'm not going to show the BizTalk stuff, but I'm going to show you the Azure stuff, no? because I'm not here to speak about BizTalk solutions. Yeah? <laughs> so, this is my flat file. As you see, I have this first line here that this is the other, okay? And I need to remove that. I can remove that by simply use a flat file schema. If you want to know that, how we can do that, I later on can explain you that, because I'm not going to do the flat file, otherwise I have to open my BSOC PM and create the schema by BSOC, and I don't want to do that, okay? Uh, so I have two different uh, scenarios. I have here, uh, one is a flat file with LR and the other is SP. So that's two different patterns that I have, okay? Of course, they are not going to be picked up directly because I just put an orchestration to pull the files when I need to avoid paying too much, so. Uh, the files are in the, in, the, in, the, in the folder. And now I can go to my logic app and Basically, let me edit here to show you. This is, a, I have a, 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 a scheduling that's going to pull, look to that folder from X amount of time. Um, I have uh, pick up the, the files from the file share. Uh, I'm going to see if the, there is a folder, there is uh, temporary documents that are inside, just to ignore all of this stuff. If it's a file, then I'm going to extract the name. So I'm getting the SPLR. And because I want this to be dynamic, so tomorrow if I have to create another partner, I don't need to go to my Logic App and create uh, another condition. I'm just going to grab from the key vault 
the URL of the, the child logic app, and then I can dynamically call that uh, logic app. Uh, so if I run that, you know that my files disappear, so they have been picked up, and if I now go and refresh, one of the clients that I'm here is going to put in a Dropbox, just for proof of concept, and another is going to put inside uh, a queue. So if I double check that, refresh that, no, come on. Not there, and check here. So, I just put the same file here. So, one of the files is here, and you see that there is no header. Uh, so, on the queue, there was a file there, and for some reason, let me check. Fourteen, no. With the same partner, probably, no? Let me check. So one is SP and another is LR. It should be fine there. So, I don't know, let me run again. Now it's run now. It should be here, but for some while it's not synchronizing, but I don't care. Uh, just leave it. That's on the queue, and oh. For some reason this is not working. It is started, but if I resume this, problem with doing live demos, okay? Just record the video, everything works fine. <laughs> uh, lesson learned. Yeah, no worries. So if that works, it should be kind of, let's resume this. It's going to create kind of a message here. And if I open that, that's going to be an XML uh, uh, without the header, okay? I did some changes before the coming here and it's not working, but you see that the point here. So, uh, the other thing is about dynamic ports. It doesn't exist dynamic ports inside Azure uh, Logic Apps, okay? The only connector that you can dynamically set up, more or less, is the HTTP connector. A part of that, everything is bind to a system, more or less, no? Yeah, some changes, but if you want SQL connector, it's bind to a SQL server, that's it. Okay? If you have two databases in two servers, same database in two servers, you cannot dynamically change that in runtime. You have to have two different connectors. It's kind of a p painful situation, but yeah, it, it is what it is. So in BizTalk, we can create two types of dynamic ports. So we can actually inside the logic app set up the, the, the port to be dynamic, or we can send to the, log to the message box and then subscribe by different uh, send ports, okay? So how we can implement this situation inside uh, Logic App or Azure Integration Service? So I have here the same situation uh, that happens. I have my Logic App, the main Logic App acts as my business logic, and the child Logic App act as 
a beast talk adapter okay in this case the sql adapter no so if i show now So I have here my main progress that basically receives the HTTP request and is going to do a lot of operations inside SQL. Insert, delete, and select operations. It's going by, again, different partners going to one SQL or another SQL, okay? So what I did was the same. I have kind of my configurations inside a key vault and based on what is the partner, I'm going to read the URL and call it with the HTTP connector to different logic app, uh, child logic apps that acts as my um, adapter. So if you look here to this SQL connector, okay, I have kind of, I have a, a property promotions here that kind of the tokens that uh, what is the, the, the operation that I want to do, okay, mainly. And then I have here what kind of you see inside the SQL adapter uh, in BSTOK, that is the operation and what type of operation you are doing. So if it's a delete operation, I'm going to do, do a delete by calling a store procedure. If it's an insert, I'm going to do an insert. And if it's a select, I'm going to do a select, okay? The reasons I am doing that is because I have only one main process and based on the content of the message, I'm going to insert in one database or in another database, but the main process is still the same, okay? So if I add a new database, I just add a new child logic app, a new configuration, that's it. I don't need to change my main pro uh, process. And now, I hope this is working. Uh, so I have here a company called Nino Cordelli that I'm going to select, and by doing a select, I'm getting the Nino Cordelli and order uh, number two. But if I do SP for sound operator and order like one, I'm going to call a different database that has the client name, sound operator, and order number one. And if I show you, I have here the Nino Cordelli database, and you see that there is number two here, and I have the sound operator here that is number one. Now I can also do an insert, and I think this is the one, and copy here. So if I'm doing that, and it's going to be order number three, and insert, Order insert successful, and if I go to Nino Crudelli and run the query, internet, internet, that's not my fault, okay? It's not my fault. It's the internet connection and Azure, Microsoft fault. Uh, let me do a refresh here. Okay. Still Microsoft fault, not me, okay? I'm, this is a service, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but... But I can query this by using my application that is better. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, see? Fast. It's still query, it's still logging, but I don't I don't care. It's still there, okay? So uh, it's internet connection. I don't know. And with that is everything that I have. I hope you enjoy small pieces, but give you some examples about how we can actually migrate. And it's n again, it's not going to be an easy ride, a simple ride, but it's going to be a possible, and, and you can do it. Uh, you can actually migrate everything that you have inside BizDog to Azure integration service, okay? 
So with that, if you have questions, I think we are on time, but if you have any questions, please go ahead. Otherwise, let's go to breakfast, okay? <laughs>